Rejoicing Heart Ministries. We hope everyone is having a great day. This is Robin Donna Litwin here to encourage you with the Word of God. Today we have a teaching about making decisions in your marriage and seeing your marriage grow. Our reading is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 21 through 25. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. Today's teaching is called Marriage Growth. This reading starts out with the Apostle Paul telling married couples to submit themselves to each other in the fear of God. This does not mean to be afraid of God, but to have respect for God, and to do this because this is what he wants you to do. Paul goes on to say that wives should submit themselves to their own husbands, as they would submit to the Lord. Paul continues on, saying that the husband is the head of the wife, even as Jesus is the head of the church, and the Savior of the body. The body spoken of here is the body of Christ, meaning the whole church, and everyone in it. The Apostle Paul relates the husband to Jesus and the wife to the church. The reading goes on to say that the church is subject to Christ and that the wife should be subject to her own husband in everything. This means that the wife should follow the husband's instructions the same way the church should follow Jesus' instructions, his word, which is shown in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verse 14. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. This verse says that Jesus is the Word that was made flesh. The church being subject to Jesus means they, meaning the church, should be following His Word and being obedient to Him. Likewise, for the wife to be subject to the husband, she should be following His Word or instruction. For the wife to follow the husband's instruction, the husband must first of all be following Jesus' instruction and be doing what it says in Colossians chapter 3, verse 17. Whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. This reading finishes with the last verse saying that the husband should love the wife, even as Jesus loves his church and gave his life for it. This clearly says that a wife should be obedient to her husband, but also that her husband should love her in a way that he would die for her. This truth is confirmed a few verses later in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 28. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loves his wife loves himself. And, just to amplify this even more in Ephesians chapter 5, verse 33, Paul wrote, Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself. And the wife see that she reverence her husband. This is speaking of a perfect heavenly marriage, and how a husband and wife should participate in that marriage. Now, how can you apply this to your own marriage? First, you need to come to a common ground in your marriage where you both want this perfect heavenly marriage. When you come to this place and both of you desire to have an awesome marriage, then you both need to do what Luke wrote in his gospel, chapter 12, verse 31. But rather, seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. You can only seek God through his word, the Holy Bible. When you do this, you will recognize that the Word will instruct you in how your marriage should work, and not only your marriage, but your whole family. What you will find when you both, husband and wife, seek God together, Jesus will be with you 100% of the time to help you, because it says in the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 18, verse 20, For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. When a husband and wife, which is equivalent to two people being gathered in Jesus' name, he is right there in the midst of you. The most difficult part of a marriage is decision making because it pits a husband against a wife. When there are decisions to make and you are at odds, you can seek wisdom from Jesus and he will guide you through it as written in Proverbs chapter 3 verse 6. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. If it is a significant decision like buying something expensive, changing jobs, or some other life-altering decision, we found that the best way to get through these decisions is by allowing Jesus to give us both peace about it. We seek God through His Word, 
Pray and meditate in his word to have peace about it before we make our choice. Seeking and using this kind of peace in your decisions is supported in the word by the Apostle Paul in his letter to the Colossians chapter 3 verse 15. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. This verse says you can make a decision about something through the peace in your heart. If a wife and a husband do not together have complete peace about something, they probably should not go through with it. If you both have complete peace, it is most likely the correct choice. To be clearer on the decision, you can pray together about it and ask for wisdom from God as to what you should do. Everything will not always be easy due to the fact that the husband and wife usually have differing opinions about the decision. When you cannot reach agreement about something that is small, the wife should be subject to the husband and ultimately allow him to make the final decision. This is where in our reading it states that a wife should be subject to the husband. The husband has full authority of the whole family, but when he loves his wife as Jesus loves the church, he will consider his wife's decision before making a selfish decision to get his own way. A wife should never be subject to her husband if it is contrary to the word of God. Anything that is not in line with the word of God that a husband is telling a wife to do, she should not do, because the word is the highest authority in this life. Now, we know in every marriage there are areas where the husband must allow the wife to have clear authority to make her own decisions. Likewise, the wife must allow the husband to make his own decisions too. This will be dependent on each marriage and how you divide responsibility. When either of you have a concern and are uncertain about what you should do, seek advice from your spouse to see what they think. Sometimes you will be shocked at the wisdom you will receive from them. When you seek God and trust each other to have a say in each other's decisions, you will see your marriage grow and the decision-making process will get easier, giving you more harmony in your marriage. Jesus will teach you how to cultivate your marriage even more. All you have to do is ask him for help and take a step toward him by seeking him together in his word. Finally, to reaffirm that it is important for husbands and wives first to seek God, we give you another verse in the Gospel of Matthew that confirms the importance of seeking the Lord. Matthew chapter 6 verse 33 says, But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Start seeking God in his word today, and have all things added to your marriage and family. Father, thank you for blessing everyone's marriage to grow through the knowledge found in your word. In Jesus' holy name, amen. Thank you for listening to Rejoicing Heart today. If this teaching has blessed you, please consider becoming a monthly partner to help us increase the ways we are proclaiming the word of God. This is easy to do. Just visit our website at rejoicingheart.net. We thank you for your support. We leave you with more encouragement from the Apostle Paul from Philippians chapter 4, verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice.